Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Off Wednesday, Off Academy here on Adobe Live. Now, if you're joining us from YouTube, that's just fine, but that's not the best way to get involved because the chat on YouTube is not the chat you are looking for. Where you need to go is behance.net slash Adobe Live, and there you can join in and ask questions. We've got a few people in there already. Everybody that's there, hi, hi, hi. And today we are joined by my two fab guests, uh, Steph Fung and uh, Bastian Catro. Uh, who is? Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. All good. Splendid. And we're also joined by Natalie from Off. Hi, Natalie. Hello. Fantastic. So in case you don't know, uh, the Off Mentorship uh, part of uh, uh, the Off Academy is a program that's been running uh, for a little while now. And Steph got the chance, along with some other um, mentees, got the chance to work with one of their dream mentors on a particular project. And uh, that been, must have been a fantastic experience that we'll find out about very, very shortly. Natalie, did you want to say anything about the Off Mentorship just before we get rolling? Yeah, of course. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Bastian and Steph. We can't wait to see your project, Steph. I know it's been a long ride. So, yeah, we're very excited to see it. So the Creative Mentorship was, you know, um, uh we all wanted to work with our idol. We all wanted, as young talent, we wanted to, uh, you know, uh, just develop our career, hopefully, and just get to somewhere uh, that is beyond uh, our capability. So the creative mentorship was uh, created for that specifically. Uh, it's a seven-month uh, program for uh, talents from 18 to 30 years old. Uh, anyone is welcome to propose their idea and their project uh, through www.off.academy. Thanks for the support of Adobe. We, uh, we get to give the proper tools for these young talents to work on this project with uh, six mentors uh, that we have available right now on our website. So uh, I, I invite everyone to just apply uh, for a chance to win for it and they even get the chance to visit their mentor at their studio we, we fly them there uh, and they will get also the, the chance to present their project uh, at Off Barcelona next year. Which is just fantastic and uh, we'll hear a bit more from Natalie later on towards the end of our stream but first of all I guess uh, it's a good idea to take a look at Steph's project and then take it from there. How does that sound? Yeah. Oh, let's do it. Perfect, let's do it. amazing Ooh. that's really fantastic so so good love that fifth floor <laughs> really catchy good. music that's an incredible piece of work steph i love that absolutely love it so, so really good just before you 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 uh you actually start and tell us a little bit more about how the project came together 
just a couple of words from you and from Vassian on on what it was like to work together. What you know, how how the whole experience went for both of you. Could sum it up in just a couple of sentences. Start with you, Steph. How was it? Was it must have been really awe inspiring, right? really amazing uh, like, I really appreciate this opportunity and I think the best part was working together and seeing how each other works like people work differently so it's interesting to see how Bastion works and then how I work and also I think also to get to the chance to meet your mentor was an awesome experience as well so I think that was just like the cherry on the top and um, we've made a project together and it's really awesome it is indeed. And Vassian, uh, the experience for a, for a mentor is often as amazing as it is for the mentee. And I'm sure that was the case here, right? How, how did you find it? For me, for me, the whole project was like basically working with a colleague, working with somebody that, uh, you know, we, we understand each other very well. I understood Steph's idea since the beginning. Uh, she had like re real clear vision of, of the whole thing. We just needed to work out the technicalities and then figure out like, you know, how to get with it. So for me, it was like very interesting, uh, especially to work with somebody in distance and then get together to actually spend time and, and work on it from up close. And, and for me, it was like, you know, I, I, it's not like uh, I was just there for Stephanie to, to help. Uh, with uh, with some hiccups and things like that, but I also learned a lot of things from from the project itself because she is amazing. She has a lot of experience in 3D and in some other uh, tools and 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 uh, software that I also didn't work uh, didn't had chance to work before. So for me, it was also like new. So I was learning also from Steph from from some of the uh, elements, which was really interesting. That's brilliant. It goes that way. It's brilliant. So, Steph, I think you've got something to walk us through your actual experience. And uh, maybe we could go through that. Let's have a look. I do indeed. So let's go through the project. It's called the Mystery Elevator. Ooh. A bit of background. Um, I'm a 3D artist or 3D motion designer. I just graduated from University of the Arts London last year and I currently work full-time as a motion designer at Selfridges and you can see on the screen here these are the type of works that I do. And then for this project the concept is is basically it's based on dreams. I had inspiration from dreams so every time that this lift scene opens something unexpected comes out and I quite like the spontaneous side of it that it doesn't have to make sense and that was the kind of theme I was going with. In terms of look I was very uh, inspired by Wes Anderson vibes and this was the colour palette that I wanted to use initially but it changed a lot uh, when it got to the final stage so I wanted to use more like teals, emeralds and gold so like a to give it a luxury kind of look. So you can see that color palette come through here and this is the initial build. So this was, I think within the first two or three months I was building and experimenting with different interiors. The floorings have different variations, even experimenting with building the walls differently, whether the pillars were there or not. So yes, that is that. So you went out and I guess you, 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 you picked at loads of different reference and places you've been before and different Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> Pinterest. It's as good as it's as good a reference source as any. To be perfectly I've got to be honest. honest I, Pinterest yeah. is. <laughs> uh, I have a whole board full of Wes Anderson slash hotel um, interior design. So that's actually right. where I got most of it from. Yeah. It's cool though. I mean, it took a great result. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, I had to think of this idea of something surprising happening inside of the lift. So I had quite a few different ideas, but I had to hear a visualize it of what things could happen. At first I was thinking, what if it was what if Tetris was falling down or you, it opens and there's a jungle or there's an aquarium and the big fishes are swimming by. So there was quite a few things that I wanted to try and I also wanted to make it fun and just basically challenge my 3D skills of what I could make and what I could animate as well. And then 
I think midway we had an office trip where I went to I flew to Albania actually and we met, I met Fasian in person and it was great because I got to see his office I got to see a new country I've never been to Albania before and I think the best part that I said previously is meeting uh, Fasian in person it's way better than just talking to somebody via a, a phone screen and I think we were really productive within the two days that I was there. Yeah, it was fun, like just sitting and, and working for a couple of hours. Actually, we were like, uh, just uh, we started like in the beginning just to know each other because we we've been talking before, uh, you know, like uh, doing sessions every month and and so on to check in. But it was like from being from up close it was really interesting to just sit there and like figure out. Okay, we need to transfer everything in this computer. And, like figure out how to do that in that computer. So yeah, that was uh, uh, was. Actually, we did a lot in, in, in those days. <laughs> we did. And also, I got to say that Vassian's office is really cool. <laughs> it looks really cool. <laughs> he's got like a whole bookshelves of like design books and like he's got prints and canvases everywhere. He's got whole rows of like, cameras. And I was like, damn, like <laughs> in the future, I would I would like to have an office like that. But it was or maybe really you, see. maybe you move to Albania and we work together. Hey. There you go. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but yeah, unfortunately, part... I'm, I'm not there to show you that. So yeah, the best part was meeting Vashin's dog, actually, because I'm absolutely a dog person. And Mia was so lovely during uh, the time that I visited. She's gorgeous. Yeah, I was just I was just saying that she she's behaving not so good today. We were at the <laughs> sea and then she and and now she made it on the internet like many people are watching it so i'm gonna take a screenshot of that and just show it to all my friends that she bothered today oh. <laughs> make her an internet star well we tried it failed <laughs> i couldn't have my dogs in here they'd tear the place to pieces <laughs> they just charge around but no it's just lovely so from that visit which I did I flew for two days I was in Albania for two days we turned it from this to this wow which mm. total it looks absolutely different uh, a few things that we worked on during this time was a lot of details that I wouldn't have focused on if it wasn't for fashion so things like for example the paintings uh we added those in because it also helped to give more context of where the hotel is situated and we also focus on lighting inside the lift but also outside of the lift which actually really helped to give it a warm atmospheric feeling beforehand it was really flat because i probably only had like two lights in there but we added way more and it really gave it that warm feeling and of course the color palette totally changed from the initial green teal gold uh color palette that i was hoping for but I i'm quite happy with this as well <laughs> Yeah, we were we were trying uh, like you know to just uh, figure out like w what was there was something that was missing. It was like working with the shadows and like all the details that Seth mentioned. Just needed it to have a little bit more of texture, and that's what we spent the time. And that was a really good time to be up close to kind of discuss it quickly and like come up with a faster decision because sometimes things like that especially when you are two people working on something is it's difficult to come up with oh, i like it this way uh, i like it this that way so it's like uh way way better if you are up close and make faster decisions uh so yeah and i think i think your original palette is in there but it's become more of an accent now hasn't it which has made it all the more striking definitely yeah yeah it made it a little bit more warm uh, yes. overall. Very much. Can we see the previous draft again? Yeah, we're sure. Let's go back. One sec. So this was the previous. Mm. And then if we go back here. Yeah, to, wow. It turned out. It's quite Can I difference. jump in? Sorry to ask you something, Steph. Were of you course. inspired? I feel like from the colors and especially that red, I feel like were you inspired by your from your trip to Albania? Uh, or like, why why did you choose these specific colors, for example, or like the carpet? Even the carpet is beautiful. I think it was. We saw this image on Pinterest, actually. I think it might even be. On, 
I'm just going to be completely honest here. Um, I think the image is actually in this presentation at the beginning. So um, this, if you see the one with the umbrella and the pink chairs and the blue flooring, that was the one that we saw actually. And we thought, let's give it a go. Let's see what it looks like. And it turned out looking quite nice. And the accent of yeah. that color palette right there of the reds, that's why we used it for the floor as well, just to uh, give the lift a focus point. Uh, but also, if you see Wes Anderson movies in general, uh, like uh, in cinematography overall, like what you see is, is you see teal and orange are like the main colors for cinematography overall. And that's where uh, uh, that's what Wes Anderson basically does. It's like dresses the, the characters or like the scenes, the, the, the cinematography of it. It makes it that way. So it feels warm and it feels it has a teal and orange in the same time. So what we had up to, until this point uh, uh, was not a matter of like just referencing to those photos, but I feel like for me and Steph, we were, we were discussing this. We were like, yeah, it needs to be a little bit warmer and it needs to have a little bit more of a uh, realistic feel to it. Like you actually would be there and like, you know, somebody took the time to do the, the difference of colors. Like you still see the teal, but you still see the orange uh and like uh you know uh pink and and a bit warmer colors uh so it's like in between and that's what wes anderson movies are are have uh, you know overall it's like uh the dressing of the characters and the scenes itself and 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 the perspective actually that uh staff chose was also from that uh like you know it's like always very symmetric and that's also something that makes everything in general very cinematographic Beautiful. It is. Very, very much so. And then I came back to London and I decided to focus on building the inside of the lift scene. So I thought because this whole project was inspired by dreams, I thought I should research more into dreams meanings. And after my research, I found four different meanings which I quite liked. So the first one was the forest scene and forest scene, what well, forest dreams symbolizes wealth and fortune of a person. And most of these uh, assets I, I got from Quixel. So I did not build these myself. It would have, that would have taken me a long time if I yeah. made everything from scratch. And then the next scene is party. So a party dream symbolizes the need to improve social skills. I kind of wanted to choose the scenes that were quite different from each other. I didn't want them similar to each other either. The next scene was the aquarium scene and aquarium scene uh, dreams symbolizes happiness through love and family, which I thought was a lovely meaning. And the last one is alarm clock dreams. I needed a way to end the animation and this was a good way because it's almost symbolizes the end of a dream uh, when you wake up and you hear your alarm clock for example but it also symbolizes a wake-up call or an important decision and then uh, we looked at alternate camera shots because like fashion said we we he suggested that i study more cinema cinematography shots yeah, yeah. and uh, i thought you know because currently the the camera is quite flat everything's quite symmetrical so to add more dynamic to the animation uh, i decided to look at uh, panning and rotating it around certain objects that will unfold the story and that was the same for the inside of the lift. I kind of wanted a split second where you could almost take a peek of what's going to be revealed from the lift. And I did that for the four dream animations. And then I thought about the challenges of what happened on this project, a bit of reflection here. And I think for me, time, <laughs> time was definitely a challenge because I've never worked on a project for seven months before. I think the maximum I've worked on a project may be two months, three months. I, I'm very used to working on quick turnarounds. So having keeping that same motivation throughout seven months is very difficult. And I feel like at the beginning, I was really pumped. I was really excited. The research phase, the ideation phase was really exciting. And then during the middle, when I started 
experimenting and trying like different animation simulations. Some of it didn't work out and I think I became a bit frustrated and a bit demotivated because not everything was working as I thought it would. And then at the same time, I thought seven months was a long time, but it goes really quick. And by, I think the last month and a half, I was almost rushing because I realized, oh my gosh, I've only got a month and a half left. I need to pull everything together. I need to render everything. I need to do the, you know, consolidate the animation and edit it. So it was a whole wave of emotions during this, during this project. People loving the memes, by the way, uh, Steph. That's just how I feel. I just thought I'd show it. Share it's it so, everywhere. so good. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I remember you telling me that uh, stuff was like. Uh, um, uh, I think you know, like uh, I feel like I have a lot of time, and I still feel like I don't have a lot of time. So that, like, you know, just feeling that. Uh, okay, how do I manage this? Like with everything that I have going on, and like just work on the project. But I think you did a great job. Like you know, just if I, I, I feel like. We as artists and as designers, it comes it comes to a point that uh, if we are really excited about working on the project, is that is like uh, the moment that we spend most of our time. It's like we want to finish it as soon as possible because that's when we are motivated and inspired. But then, as more that time extends, and um, and we we start losing, and more we talk about the project, we we it feels more complete and it feels more finished. Uh, as time passes by and we kind of start losing, uh, you know, interest in that. But like, uh, you know, you found a really good way to just keep up with it and and, and do all the other, uh, you know, like stunts that you wanted to do for the elevator because we started with one and we moved. We had so many other options to do, but, you know, we went with those ones and like some of them are really difficult actually 3D and design wise to, to achieve. So, uh, yeah, that was, uh, you know, thumbs up to you for keeping and being inspired to, to wrap it up in time. I think also Vashon really helped me with prioritizing which scenes to do first, because like you said, we had so many ideas of what could happen inside the lift. And um, I wanted to try everything, but Vashon said, you know, start with the ones that you know you can do first. Yeah. Get those out of the way. And then if you've got spare time, then you can work on the extra scenes. And I think that's uh, an example is actually the hotel picture you can see on the screen right now. That was actually meant to be in the animation. It was actually meant to be part of the opening scene to frame and give the hotel context of where it's situated, but it didn't make the cut. And uh, I just ran out of time to put it in. Yeah, that was one of the things that you started doing, and I was like, uh, "Like, let's let's work on the elevator." So that's probably my my fault for. Now. <laughs> will there ever be? Uh, will there ever be a Steph cut out there? Will you ever? Do you think you'll ever expand? That? I mean, it's beautiful the way it is, but do you ever get the feeling that you might revisit it at some point? And I think this project. Um... Yeah, I think so. I think lots of different situations can happen inside the lift. Mm. So um, I think, yes, it's, a, it's quite an exciting project and I can definitely see a longevity in it. Yeah. Yeah, you still have the the, the idea that we discussed together too, but we won't say, but uh, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, there, there, is a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is a chance that it continues. Yes. I mean, always if if Steph is still inspired after seven months working on it. <laughs> I mean, projects like this are a lot like many kinds of relationships, right? At the beginning, it's all passion and, you know, inspiration and passion. But then as you get into it, it's it becomes more of a thing where, okay, I've got to work at it a little bit now and trying to keep the love going while, while you're working at it. It's tricky, right? Definitely. But that's that's uh, the beauty about personal projects overall. Like uh, I think, like also staff considered this as a personal project because it was her, her project. But I feel like with personal project overall, it's like you can start them when you want and you can stop them when you want. Uh, mm -hmm. So, but it's better to do a lot and experiment with many, and uh, you know, stop when when you're tired of it and get with something else. And that's why I love personally uh, personal projects because they just 
you know, keep you alive as a creator or designer, uh, artist in, yeah. Yep. Okay. So what's the next step then, Steph? Where are we with the, uh, that is the end of this presentation on my There thing. we go. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I didn't know how many he had, so I just sort of wait for a moment. <laughs> I didn't want to cut you off again. <laughs> no worries. Okay, then. So winding back, uh, winding back from there to to when you, uh, when you actually started to plan your submission. Now, I've spoken to a couple of the previous mentees on the last two editions of the Off Academy live streams. And um, Vlad, the first one, he did his, his the day before thinking, you know, oh, I, won't, I won't get this, but I'll give it a shot anyway. And I think that was pretty much the case last week as well. So how, how far ahead from the deadline did you submit? And how long did you give yourself before? See, I remember seeing that uh, the opportunity from off festival because I was going to go this year, mm. but then I saw it on the website, so I clicked. Oh, what is what is off academy? And so I read it, and this was on my lunch break. Uh, I was at work, and I thought, well, I've got this idea that I had in September, and it, which was the project, and I thought, I'm just going to go for it because um, if if I go for it and I don't get it, I'm still going to do this personal project. And if I go for it and I get it, I get a mentor and a personal project. So, yeah, that was my mentality back then. And I think I applied October, roughly. So I applied with plenty of time left for the deadline. That's brilliant. I mean, so we've spoken to, and I know people with all sorts of applications sometimes think, so, oh, this could never happen to me. And there's that whole thing these days about self-doubt around, you know, your actual work. But it's good. I mean, I can see why you've got, you had confidence in your work. I mean, your ability is incredible. So, you know, but so good to see that, that not everybody waited till the absolute last minute to do it. Otherwise it'd be a tremendous rush for, for Natalie and for Hector uh, uh, to go through, but uh, no, amazing. So, right, that's really good, plenty of time. So I guess uh, your submission must've been pretty detailed then, if you would. I don't remember submitting any pictures. I know some no. people, some candidates did, but I, I wrote it all uh, okay. as an idea. And I guess Vassian liked it. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did Vassian? How did how did you um, how did you find Steph's submission? How did uh, what's what struck you about it more than the other submissions? Oh, uh, I feel like uh, coming as a uh, as a designer as a creative that I also have a lot of tutorials about what I do and like of with the style of my work. Usually, it tends that a lot of. Uh, you know, other creatives that are inspired from my work or want to, you know, work with me. This, they sort of follow my style of, of work. So most of the other submissions, uh, some of them were, were also really interesting, but they were, uh, I feel like they were really close to what I was doing in sense of like, they didn't have anything. Uh, I mean, there were a couple of more that were uh, really interesting, but what I, what I found really interesting on Steph idea was that also for me was a challenge and for me, like, the, the way how I, I do it was like, you know, it's not just how would I be also interested on working on this project. I wanted also to find something that is a challenge for me too. So I'm also dedicated to it because if it is something that I already know how to do completely from from scratch to the end, what's the fun in that, right? So for me, it was yeah. like, Steph has a really great idea. She, she, uh, she, uh, she, I saw that she also had a lot of skills before with some of because you submitted your portfolio as well so i was confident that you know like we could achieve your idea because uh uh with with your skills and probably with my uh, help we could get to to a certain uh point but most from everything was like the unique idea of it and also being different from everybody else who submitted the the project at least that's what made me say you know what i'm gonna choose this challenge and uh you know um also like uh join actually the, the staff challenge because uh it was uh for both of us was something new and uh that's that was a fun in it oh fantastic so steph how did you find how did you feel when you found out that you'd actually been selected how did that feel i mean it must have been amazing but 
probably jumping in my room because I, I got the email. I thought, no way. This can't be real. And then it happened. So, yeah, I think I was really, really happy. Uh, one thing, though, I probably should have read when I applied. I didn't realize I was meant to initially present this project. I thought it was just you do the project and that's it. So when I read the email, I was like, oh, I have to present it as well. <laughs> make sure you read <laughs> there, you the there you go just just to bring in natalie for a minute natalie you get you i mean i should imagine that this time around there'll be even more things for you to look through in the middle but how daunting a task is it for for all of the different things that you get i mean is it is it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds or yeah, we were actually at the launch of the of the mentorship last year. We were actually very uh, delighted to receive that many proposals, and um, it was really interesting to go through the different styles and uh, the different proposals that people sent. And I have to say that also narrating the the, the idea is also makes it plays a, a, an important role because, as I mentioned in our previous streamings. Uh, we were also interested to see like your passion into this, like how much do you want to do it? It's not just about working with a professional mentor or like traveling to his studio. It's more like how much do you want this project to happen? Uh, and so, yeah, we received so many amazing proposals. Uh, we had to, to pick some finalists in order for us to send it to the mentor, of course, because the last word is for the mentor to choose his mentee in the end. Um, so yeah, I mean, and I'm very, I'm, I, just, I would just like to comment also, like, it's am it's amazing how to see that also the mentor, uh, you know, chooses something different from their own work uh, in Bastian's case, so. Oh, yeah, for, I mean, uh, overall, also like the, the, the whole idea of, of doing the Off Academy is very interesting because I wish when I was starting out, I had a chance to to apply to this. I mean, of course, there were a few things like that, but nothing compared to this. Because you get, you, you have an idea and you apply uh, and you have a chance to, uh, and this is not just because it's so limited. I think like uh, everybody, uh, if you have a chance to participate in this sort of programs is, is just do it. Like, you know, I think also staff, that's what you did. It was like, you know, I'm just going to give it a chance. It's just, if you even didn't pre add like a photo or anything, you even did it, you just wrote the idea and that's it. The idea is like, you know, if it's something very interesting, you get a chance to work with somebody else from around the world, which is in this case was Albania, which is just a really small country. And you start the, you know, you finish your project with a, with a random person somewhere in the internet. And that's, that's the beauty of it. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's, um, uh, it's amazing. Like the, the relationship that you also build, uh, between you and the mentee. Uh, and in this case, you know, we're gonna, I'm, I'm, we're hopeful to receive, uh, double the the proposals this year and especially that we have two more mentorships that we recently added to the to the four existing mentorships so yeah i think it's, it's amazing that 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 you get so and i'm sure you will get a lot more interest this year around and steph brilliant of course that you actually did it you know because this is the thing if you don't actually try how will you ever ever know if you know, if you're going to make it, you can't, you can't get in if you can't try, right? Exactly. I just say go for it because you don't have anything to lose if you, if you don't get it. You can still do your personal project if you still don't get it. So yeah, exactly. No, brilliant way to, uh, way to approach it. So the, the stage we're at now then, right, is you found out you've got it. You've been jumping around your room. You're, you're crazy, crazy excited, of course. I mean, who wouldn't be? It's just uh, amazing. And you have your first meeting with Bastian. How, how was that? How did that go? Yes, uh, I think our first meeting, uh, we were just trying to get to know each other, trying to get to know what our skill sets are and also what I do in my day-to-day -day job and what he does in his work. So that was, yeah, I still remember that first meeting it was just getting to know and introducing to each other yeah and you you have good memories of the first meeting uh, Bastian as well you uh, I would say yes overall we were like uh, okay let's 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 get to know each other as, as Steph was saying like you know how uh, we also were trying to figure out some of the 
technicalities on how to plan ahead on, on like uh, overall the project. We're talking about like, oh, what, what software are you going to be using? And like, you know, what, uh, uh, how we will set everything up that it's easier for us to move forward and like, you know, all these. But the more interesting part was, you know, like uh, I've been personally, I've been doing freelance for more than 14, 15 years. And I am from a small country, which is Albania. And, and sometimes I felt like just the flexibility of, of working online and, and having the internet, uh, I, I kind of was used with the idea of working with people around the world and, and just sharing things online. But it's a matter of like, everybody's different. And for, for me, the first uh, meeting was like, you know, let's, let's, Let's find a flow that we can work together. And sometimes, you know, with with some people, you don't uh, you you don't get the right flows in the beginning. But uh, with staff was right straightforward. We understood each other very well, and uh, it was meant that you know, like we we're gonna get each other, and we know how it's uh, it's gonna play out very well. So yeah, it was a good feeling since the beginning. That's good. That's good. And so that, then, Steph. So the, the, all of that and the, all of the, the confetti has landed and whatever, and you're then into the gradual reality of, of actually starting out the project. So, what were the next steps then from, uh, from your initial meeting with Vashin? Lots of evenings and weekends. <laughs> we yeah. To, because I work full time, right? So I use yeah. my spare time. Some. Not every day, because I, I know I'm a workaholic, but I don't do every single day. Um, so some evenings, some weekends, I was working and building this project. And I would send, if I had any updates, I would send it to Vassian to make sure that we were still on the same page or any updates, I would send it to him. Right. Okay. But did you did you have any, any form of, did you create any form of spreadsheet or chart based plan anything like that to work things to is it you know because some people do some people some people are meticulous and uh and and make things out like that saying right i'm going to try and do this by then and this by then and this by then and project track it other people like myself it's just post-it notes onto the side of of my board <laughs> Yeah, I'm not that organized to have spreadsheets. Um, no. I just took it month by month because every month we would have a catch up call uh, just to see how the project's going. So I would take it month by month case and um, just try work as hard as I could. But that that was the milestone, actually. I mean, like we didn't really have like uh, a spreadsheet of like what to do, but well, we had a plan. Like every time we had a meeting, uh, I think we were like, uh, okay, by next month, what do you think you're gonna have ready? Uh, and Steph was like, uh, I think I can do that, that, and that. And if I can fit, I could do something more. So every time we were like, uh, you know, checking in and like catching up, we were like, okay, let's make a plan that uh, you're gonna find the time to do up to the next meeting, so we can move forward. And I think that kind of worked pretty well, even though in the in the end, uh, uh, you know, like we had to figure out some some more things. But I feel like uh, at least for me, that's how it felt. It went pretty smooth on organizing, but it was a matter of like staff finding the time to work on on some stuff. Also, considering that she was also full time. Uh, and Vashid oh. has a lot of feedback. Every time we would have a, a, a call, I, I would write everything down. I'd be like, hmm, hold on, let me see where where to start. And yeah, it's a lot to I, uh, so, Sorry. Sometimes I. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, sometimes I felt like I was just talking. I was like, okay, I'm going to stop now because I feel like you are not. She's like, no, I'm following you. I'm just writing. I'm just writing things down. Just uh, <laughs> and, and what I love is that she, uh, the, the best part is that probably she wrote everything down that I said and she, she still uh, applied most of the stuff that she wanted to do. It was like, uh, and this is what I love. Like, I love listening to other people, even though I really admire their work and anything. But in the end, it's my project and I want to do whatever I want. So I gave, uh, you know, also that's that was the whole point about the whole thing was like me just uh, letting staff do whatever she wanted to do with the project. But it was just me there for like, you know, I can help you in, in, in case like, you know, you find something or like, let's let's it's like a, a second person that is like uh, you just double yourself and it's like okay whatever you say we're gonna do but like uh you know we have two and let's let's sort of do it together in sense of like figuring out uh, creativity how things are going to be built and so on so that that's the beauty of also being a mentor is like 
it's your project, do whatever you want. I won't interfere on it. So that's what I did. I, I gave her some instructions on certain things, but then uh, I was so happy to see when she was not doing things that I was uh, mentioning because I felt like, okay, that, that's also a really good way to keep her also motivated on, on, on the project. Uh, I don't know if you felt that, but that's how I felt. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. True. I feel like the feedback you gave me you did say, you know, of course, everything is optional. You know, you can take it this direction or this direction. And I think I just evaluated after each time we had a call and I, I chose which ones to prioritize first. I think, yeah. uh, oh, sorry, go on. carry on. No, but that, that's that's the beauty in personal projects. It's like, it's yours, right? Like uh, you could have, because if this was a project for, uh, I don't know, for an agency or like for a client or anything like that, you're going to have a lot of creative feedback uh, from the client or from the creative director or the art director. And for me, I didn't want to be that art director that just, you know, uh, comes and <laughs> was around. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, it's, it's okay. It's beautiful. I like it, but no, we didn't have that. It was the, you know, it's your project and whatever, you, however you want to take it on, uh, it's your perspective. So it doesn't matter on that case. The only thing was like, okay, let's exactly that's, I didn't want to be that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I think that's the mark of a, of a, of a great mentor is that, you know, you're not, because some people could quite easily come along and take your dream, you know, your idea, and it suddenly morphs into one of their things. And that's the mark I think of a great mentor is that, they're really taking care of your vision and just saying, you know, you could do this or have you thought about doing that? There's no nothing being prescribed to you and saying, well, what you should do is this. Yeah, it's giving you a range of choices and them explaining their rationale behind the choices they're giving you. So I think, you, I mean, all of the mentors, I think, for the Off Academy have been fantastic so far and that's brilliant. Uh, mental, absolutely brilliant. So, I would like great. to add, Tony. Sorry that. Mm. Uh, let's see. I mean, I really love. I'm. I'm really enjoying listening. This coming from Bastian because when we came up with the Off Academy idea, that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted to build a platform uh, and kind of come up with this new form of education where, like, you you have all the freedom, which is obviously very challenging for you, Steph, and for all the mentees. You have all this freedom, you have all this time, and you have to manage it. But from our side, of course, from the creative mentorship team, we always follow up with the mentee and the mentor. We get some reports from them every month. Uh, we organize the phone, uh, the video calls every month, so we can just kind of keep things on track. But without forgetting that they have the absolute freedom to manage their time, and this is how you build your career this is how you uh, arrive to places and you yeah. know watching watching the past mentees and stuff you know going through all of that and taking these decisions is very like it makes us really proud to be able to to provide these for them so thank you so much for sharing you know the story and and the challenges that you went through uh, it's really inspiring for me as well so yeah thank you yeah, for being I so organized as well natalie <laughs> Exactly. That's that's what I wanted to add was like, you know, as much as we uh, as Steph as well and, and me, uh, we also have like, you know, during while doing this project, we, we both have full time uh, uh, work and like we of course we dedicated the right time to the project. But, uh, you know, I, I personally I don't consider myself being the most organized person ever. Uh, uh, and catching up with emails and catching up with times and like checking with Steph. Uh, I feel like, you know, Natalie and, and the whole team, you did a really great job of like, you know, just keeping track of, of everything we were doing and like uh, helping us out also figure out the timing and like, uh, you know, like how the whole thing would be organized. And that's that's a big up to you as well, because that, uh, you know, uh, we are some, I, I, this is for me, I don't know about yourself, but for me it's like, I'm, I consider myself a bit more like, a creative that I like to do things when I'm inspired and I'm trying to build around that. I know sometimes we have to push ourselves, but like I felt like, you know, the best time I, 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 we are creative and, and we create is when we uh, when we feel about it. And like, you know, but sometimes we need uh, organization and sometimes we lack on that because we 
you know, we get carried away from the new thing that we are really passionate about. So okay. we need somebody to uh, bring us down and say, okay, are we is this thing is in this date, and we're like, okay, I'm gonna find the time to work on. So yeah, I mean, it's it was very interesting on like on both parts to to organize this, and uh, I thought it would be more difficult, but I felt like it was very smooth the whole process. And thanks to Nathalie and Steph, also you being flexible on timing and and uh, yeah, overall was was uh, really interesting to to be part of. Now, and I think you've got an excellent mentee as well. I mean, you, you are she so, is. yeah, so fantastic. Hi, thank with, you. Yeah, you are though. <laughs> it's, it's, but I've, I've got to ask: Were there any? So, were there any points during during your work on the project where you actually dipped down on it? And if you did, how did you? get around that? Were there any points where you kind of got to something you thought, do you know what, I can't do it or it's not working or whatever. And how did you get around it if you, if when you came up against problems? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there were times. Um, actually, there's a few scenes that I didn't include, but it was more to do with, was, oh gosh, it was more to do with when I was building the scenes inside of the lift. Like I said, there was a lot of things animation wise or simulation wise that I thought that I could do, but it was too time consuming uh, or it didn't work and I couldn't understand why. So uh, a lot of it, I guess, was my technical skill. I couldn't understand why things weren't working and then I became frustrated. So then I guess the way I picked myself back up was if it didn't work, I just move on to something else that does work. Mm. Yeah, no, that's a good because the reason I ask is that these days, especially, I think that a lot of creatives who have self-doubt, it's because the world presents the best version of itself to us all the time. And I think it's important for everybody to, to see that it doesn't matter how amazing you are, you know, and <laughs> is that sometimes you do have a thing where you think, I, I can't get around this, but, and, but I've got to, and then you think about it. So I think it's an important thing to acknowledge, you know, that you do that. That's the process, I think. I think it's important during this uh, personal project that anybody undertakes is that you've got to understand that you've got to fail a few times. Like It's not going to be a smooth ride. And uh, people don't usually show that, I guess. Uh, yeah. But it's important to know that it does happen. Yeah, and I think it, it, it makes things easier. So, I mean, Vassian, were there any, time, any times where you thought, I don't know how to, I don't quite know how to, how to make suggestions here? I mean, I mean, Again, you're incredible. So I, I doubt you ever ever have a moment where you can't. But uh, I feel like I feel like the project itself was very smooth overall. Like the the idea, it was a matter of like uh, stuff finding the time and and uh, taking the time to do the animations because some of the things were a little bit complex technically on how to achieve them. And and creativity, she she has so many more ideas on to do with elevator because. As a thing, as a concept, it's like endless. Uh, you can do so many things. And and as Steph was saying, like the only times we both felt that like okay, we are a little bit stuck was like when when we had like these crazy ideas to do inside the elevator, and we were like, okay, let's do the ones that we can actually really achieve and have yeah. those as a backup, and then move to if we have the right time, do the complex ones which we really love. Or we could have gone the other way, like you know, spend a lot of time on one scene. Uh, and get that really right, but then it wouldn't have a, a lot of. So I feel like some, especially with these sort of projects, sometimes it's better to, uh, if it is a personal project, it's better to learn from it because you gain more from getting it done and learn something from it than actually do it right because you're never going to get it right. Like if you see this project stuff, I'm not, I'm, I won't spoil it for you or anything. I won't, I don't want to break it. But like, if you see this project after one year, I'm pretty sure that uh, even from now, probably you, you are, you have like thousands of things that you want to change on that. So you're never going to be happy with a project. And, and that's coming from my project as well, that even project I spend a lot of time curating and like really working on it, it's going to come a moment that you just feel like, you know, uh, they're endless. So what, one thing that I learned, and I feel like it's the best thing you can do as a creative, is like find the moment that you can say, you know, it's enough. I'm going to stop here. Yeah. I'm going to do, uh, you know, I'm just going to push this forward. I learned something from it. 
and the next thing it's going to be way better than this because yeah sometimes we get stuck on that i get messages from from other creatives saying like uh you know i i feel like this uh, i can't post this on instagram because like when i post the image it gets all blurred and like that's why you don't post it or like that's why you don't show it to the world because it gets pixelated like you know like we always find reasons to uh because we want the perfection as creatives but mm. we're never going to get that so it's a matter of like you know just being creative and, and moving forward and i think uh we organized it well and steph did a really great job on understanding that and moving forward um i wonder will we do you think we'll see so off next year when of course you'll be presenting your work for reels um out there i mean this is for reels now but i mean for reels for reels in front of lots and lots of reels people that are looking at you how's that going to be and and will we see will we see an amended version at that time or you know an updated version or or the original that you did for now good question probably thinking about it now yeah sure <laughs> well, <laughs> Yeah, you'll add in the the at the more time consuming things that Yes, exactly, because now I don't have that pressure of uh you know how we had seven months and then after the seven months that's when it was done. So now I don't have that pressure of okay, I've got seven months to do this. Um so it's gonna be more relaxing. I can experiment with different things. So yes, probably is my answer. Yeah. That'd be interesting to see. I mean, I guess you'd really you'd have to show you'd have to show both. I think, wouldn't you? You'd have to show the thing that happened in the seven months, and then where you've gone from there, which is uh, which is good. I'd be very excited to see that next year. By the way, I'm really looking forward to that um, already, which will be great. And where, where are you? Where do you? Where are you planning on heading from here? Where's 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 next for you, Steph? Where do you think you're going to go? Oh God, I haven't really thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, I, personal projects have always been a thing that I always do in my spare time. Um, so I, I assume I will just carry on with that and just continuously improve my skills. Mm. I guess so. I mean, but the personal projects help you to stay sane, especially yeah. when you're in a when you're in a full time thing for, you know, uh, did you say it's Selfridges? I think you did say That's right. Selfridges. Yeah. So, you know, when you're doing something like that and you're getting all of this pres prescriptive stuff all the time, uh, then I guess personal projects I know they are for me and I'm sure they are for Sebastian and, and Natalie as well is that they're the important things that give you something real to to hold on to they feel your soul your creative yeah. soul yeah they do I believe so that's fantastic yeah. my my suggestion to everybody would be find a job to pay the rent if you're just starting out and with those cover those time and like the rest of the day that you have free just do on your personal project it's the best way you can kind of maintain your personal projects. It's like having a job that pays the rent. And because I get people saying that I don't have time to work on my personal project. Yes, you do. The same yeah. as you have to go to the gym or like, you know, uh, it's just us finding justifications for not doing it. So it's really important that you fuel your personal projects. Uh, I think are way more important than anything because especially in creative fields uh that's you choose to be a creative because you didn't actually choose it's like that's what you love to do and uh sometimes when we work somewhere that goes away fades away with the with the job um, yeah but uh yeah yeah maybe 10 percent less netflix and uh and 10 percent more creative projects right <laughs> well yeah i mean you could design something for netflix but you could <laughs> totally good but all right and, and of course other streaming providers are, are available as well i ought to be clear <laughs> sure, sure, sure. but no i just think that you know it's so easy when you get in to just flop out and just sort of you know just go <laughs> into that into that moment than it is to but it doesn't take a great deal of effort does it and i think i think that once you start once you start allocating yourself the time to work on a personal project like that hopefully your passion for it carries you through if you've got a real passion project to work on that that would give you the energy that you sometimes think but it's getting around the thought block first of thinking no today i'm definitely going to work on my personal project 
Yeah, and and the most interesting part is now with social media, I, everything has changed, and with platforms like BNs and like uh, you know other creative uh, communities, is the idea that you can collaborate with other creatives and like even if you just do something very quick and small, you can just post it there. You get the feedback. So the fuel for you to do something creative every day are actually the people you share it with and the feedback you get because yeah. nothing needs to be final and you can now more than any where any time in the history of humankind we had a chance to post something and have thousands and millions of people watching it in the second you do post that so it's that's the fuel that you get sometimes that's if you don't control that very well it could turn for the bad but like you know being conscious of like your uh decisions but i feel like that's the fuel for me also that helped build up my personal projects is like sharing with the world i don't care what you say if you like the font i used if if the colors it's my personal project and that's it i do it my way and uh that's always it's going to be that way so uh you know that's the fun of me uh and that's why i'm pushing for everybody to just do personal projects and Steph is already doing that and she also has some other stuff that I'm seeing that she's doing on site which are really interesting uh, and yeah uh, I think it's it's uh, I sp- uh, even if you are in school you can just you know uh, do a personal project absolutely absolutely and and Steph uh, this project and other things you're working on can be found on your Behance profile right That's as well right. I was taking a look at this yes uh, I think yesterday I was having a look at this project. So it might have been this morning. Don't know. One day, so much like yet the other day, and whatever. <laughs> but but no, fantastic stuff. So people, and I think Tim will pop a link to that into the uh, chat, so the people in the chat uh, can go ahead and see that. Um, just before we uh, switch over to Natalie uh, for just a couple more things on the Off Academy, I'll just let you know that people have been loving this in the chat. Um, there's a little bit of chat around spreadsheets and post-it notes, so I've started a debate, uh, or we have started a debate uh, there around that. But no, everybody's loving the projects, really enjoyed the movie um, and, and your project. Fantastic and great to see you here and thank you so so much for sharing it with us and thank you um Bastian actually for interrupting part of your vacation right you're on the vacays at the moment but. yeah I mean it was not that it was interrupting it was that I just extended a little bit my vacation because I don't know with everything that is going around the world I don't know when I'm gonna have another chance to do this That's I was true, like you know true. what I'm, yeah I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay here a little bit more and see if I can still work and do vacation a little bit which it's playing good uh, it's been only four days of starting working and also being on vacation it's kind of working out but I'm sure soon I need my routine <laughs> yeah so fantastic. yeah well it's been lovely spending this time with you thank you so so much uh, for that i'm really looking forward to seeing you at off uh next year as well so it'd be lovely to say uh hi for reels uh in there as well um but natalie uh, just a few things uh from you if you want to give any more information about the off academy that uh, for people who might be interested in the current round of submissions Definitely. First of all, thank you so much, Vaskin, for all your time and effort put into this. And Steph, congratulations on finally revealing your project. We can't wait to see it in details on your Behance page. Uh, we will share that on our Off Academy account on Instagram, which I invite everyone to follow us there on Off Academy Instagram to see what's next uh, and how and learn how you can apply to the next creative mentorship. Uh, we're very excited to announce that we just added two more mentorships, uh, which is photography and interactive design, next to 3D art direction, motion, and video mentorship. So, again, I invite everyone, any young talent, to go ahead, submit their project idea over there. Uh, and honestly, Bastian was a great example uh, in the stream, which because you don't have to, pro- you don't have to, sorry, you don't have to send. Uh, an idea that is specifically based on your mentor's uh, work. You can just present any idea that you think works best in that field and go for it. Uh, you never know if you're going to win or not. So, uh, yeah. Can I, can I apply as well? Are you under 30 years old? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. Uh, I am. <laughs> I am. Yes. 
Uh, yeah, of course, anyone. Yeah, that, that, that is a question. Do you have similar programs for people over 30s? Hopefully, I mean, honestly, we, we extended the age from last year. Last year, it was limited to 26, I believe. Uh, right now, it's up to 30 years old. So hopefully, the third round of the mentorship, we can focus on a oh. large group. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Tony. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to see what's uh, what's next for Steph and what's next for Basin Tamien. Uh, sorry, as well. So, yeah. Oh, amazing. What an amazing hour to spend with you all. It's been really, really lovely. Steph, beautiful, beautiful project uh, that you've done. I'm really looking forward to seeing. Uh, as I'm sure everybody who's watching is looking forward to seeing what you come up with next. So really fantastic. Keep it up. And uh, thanks again to Sebastian for being such an amazing mentor for you and for sharing his time here today. And Natalie, of course, for the Off Academy. But for now, that's it from all of us. We'll, uh, we'll bid you goodbye. We're back next week uh, for the next installment of Off Academy uh, here on Adobe Live. But uh, until then, stay safe, stay creative and uh, be happy. Take care. Bye now. Bye. Bye. Bye.
。